This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com. This show is brought to you by IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show. Hey guys, it is the Indie Mayhem Show. I'm Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter here in the Pittsburgh Sorgatron Media Studios. I'm ready to talk with people in and around independent professional wrestling. And we are, of course, recording as always live on the Indie Wrestling.us Facebook page. Uh, so, uh, and uh, we got our guest with us. We got another tag team with us. Uh, this evening uh, but first please go check out everything at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and indie wrestling.us you'll find other podcasts you'll find other content with the indie wrestling network and a lot of people we talk with on the show on this show are featured over on indie wrestling.us uh, uh, across many of those promotions that we feature over there uh, if you want to drop us a line at good times at wrestling or 412 206 wms0 uh, if we have somebody announced that we'll be talking with and you want to drop some questions or anything like that you can do that there or if you have anybody you think we should have on the show that we haven't uh, hey we can't see all the wrestling out there and it's a uh, very it's very helpful if uh, you're like hey check out this guy the girl or whatever and uh, and uh, or any conversations round tables you think we should feature in the future let us know uh so speaking of hey our guests this week we have again a tag team with us i know them very well from the black diamond wrestling uh group in west virginia but i know you guys just debuted uh for a company or two i think now in pennsylvania so they're getting around so we're getting them on the come up gavin jacobs and garrett lee they are the I said those backwards with the cues, but if you're on video, <laughs> but uh, the Wayward Sons are with us today. How you doing, guys? Good. How are you? How are you? Um, excellent. So we have a little bit of a, a icebreaker here for you guys, as we always do on the show to get to know you. What was uh, so? W- what's your earliest memory of professional wrestling? Mine, I would have to say, um, I've tried to find the video online, but. Uh, I think Lex Luger attacked Sting a long Ooh. time ago, and I don't know if I made it up because I can't find it nowhere. But he came out of like a horse, like a carriage off the stage. Like I don't, I may have dreamt it. I was real little. Like, that was, sounds like something they would do. Yeah, like and he <laughs> he like took out his leg and his knee, and I, I remember crying quite heavily. But I think that's the earliest I can remember. Like wow. I said I could have made it up. I I don't know. It's, it's, <laughs> but yeah, I can't find it nowhere. It was uh, a wrestling fever dream. It was, yes. <laughs> what about you? I it was a few months after Monday Night Raw started. Mm-hmm. Uh, because my family wasn't wrestling fans, so we only had the one TV in the living room at the time, mm-hmm. so we didn't watch wrestling. But then a few months before that, I got a TV in my room and cable and all that. And I remember turning, watching something, and then Monday Night Raw came on, and it started with. Shawn Michaels was outside of the building, and Mr. Perfect showed up, and they got in a brawl out in the parking lot and everything else. And I will say it was like two months into Monday Night Raw. So it was, but after that, I was a diehard Shawn Michaels fan and started watching it every week. That's awesome. So both of you guys, um, uh, so, you know, was it something that you guys were kind of into, like, throughout, you know, uh, yeah, you know, what, what, at what point did you guys uh, decide you wanted to get into the ring? <clears throat> Probably then. I mean, it's always been a dream of mine to step inside the ring. So, mm-hmm. I mean, pretty pretty early on when I had my first wrestling experience, I, I knew that I wanted to get in. So, I mean, it was pretty pretty easy decision for me, I guess. Yeah, I, uh, I remember I was in high school, and I would get on online and look up like wrestling schools near me Mm -hmm. and the closest one at the time was al snow had one in lima ohio and it was like a couple hour drive and it just for me it wasn't realistic at the time being Mm -hmm. whatever age and then i kind of fell out of it for years and years until i ran into west fetty beast man and that's why he's hanging out in the chat room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. He wants to know what's going. So is 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 what's the one? So tell me a story there. Like, what what got you into actually getting in the ring? Then I uh, 
I've I'm a I used to be a big time softball player, mm-hmm. and Wes was just getting into softball, and he was at a field taking batting practice, and I showed up, and we started talking, and he's like, "Oh, I'm a wrestler." I'm like, "Oh, okay." So we started talking about that, and then one thing led to another, and it was just a bucket list thing. And I told him, "You think you can get me one match?" He said, "Yeah, come down. I'll train you. We'll get you ready for one match," and then. It, I said we'll see how it goes after that, and it worked out. And no. so, so this is so that that sounds a little that, that doesn't sound like normal training that I always hear about. Like, well, how much training went into getting ready for one match? Well, it started. I actually started training. It was three or four years ago. Okay, before we got the Diamond Plex. Yeah, I was going to the spot shows, setting up. I did two or three, <clears throat> two or three shows, and then things kind of got out of control, and I couldn't make it as much. So I stopped training, and then uh, me and Wes kept in touch and whatnot. I kept going to some of the shows to watch, and then when they got the Diamond Flex, Wes messaged me and said, training's Tuesday, or training's Sunday, whatever day it started. He said, 12 o'clock, be there if you want to be there. I said, okay. So I was there and started back up again. Awesome. So the, the, you, you had a good spot to do that. Yeah. It, yeah I, I think we've had other people tell stories about how like wrestling was kind of, or I'm sorry, training was kind of spotty yes, over there uh, over time. So wherever they could get in, they yeah, got in. That was... Yeah. Um, awesome. What about you, Gavin? Me, um, you know, the typical uh, friends and family had our own little backyard thing going. And then um, a good friend of mine, uh, Joe, he, uh, Introduced me to somebody who had their own company, which I'd rather not say, because it's not <laughs> not pleasant for me. Um, but he introduced me to him, and I got trained a little, and I actually started around the time uh, Beastman did. And I won't bring up his old gimmick, but but we kind of <laughs> started together there in that that aspect, and then um, kind of got a shady end of the training deal, I guess, and then uh, <clears throat> kind of went off on her own and kind of. You know, it's, I guess it's bad to say, but kind of learned as I went, I guess. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then that's how, I mean, that's how it started. <coughs> but, uh, like if my friend introduced me to a guy who had a wrestling promotion and maybe two or three wrestling or two or three training sessions and they, uh, threw me and Wes in a match together. It was atrocious. It was oh, horrid, oh. horrid. And then uh, a couple matches like that, then we kind of went our own separate ways and I kind of learned as I went, I guess. Mm-hmm. So yeah, my my training wasn't on par, I guess. <laughs> so it's kind of like instead of the seven degrees of Kevin Bacon, it's seven degrees of West Fetty. Yes. Okay, everybody everybody in this area is, is that is that yes. what brought your tag team together? Yes, everybody yes. in this area is connected to West connected Fetty West somehow. somehow. So he's the uh, he's like the Dominic Danucci of uh, yes. West Virginia. Yes. <laughs> Wes is the gateway drug to professional wrestling. Yes. Oh, <laughs> in this area, yes. Uh, so tell me about that. So I know Gavin. Uh, you know, I think when I, I first started coming to Black Diamond over a year ago, um, you guys were pretty much in singles uh, kind of runs. You know, tell me about you know how were those going at the time, and, and kind of what brought you guys together eventually. With um, I team. actually I, I helped Beast Man mm-hmm. train Gary. Mm-hmm. So I mean that's that's kind of how we met, and uh, you know we would. Uh, I mean, I like I I liked singles, but I started. Get, I guess I started getting bored with it. Mm-hmm. I guess, and I just wanted something new. I've never worked a tag at, team before. At the time, you were getting bored with it. You were the world champion. I was. It was it was horrible. <laughs> but I mean, I, I don't know. I've never worked tag, and I figured it I, it would kind of spark my interest again, mm-hmm. which it has. It's been fun. I've, mm-hmm. I've really enjoyed working tag, and I've I've never done it before. Mm-hmm. So I mean, that that's kind of where when me and you met. That's kind of where I was with it. I was just kind of bored on the singles aspect of it mm-hmm. and then i started talking to garrett here and uh decided we'll try to put something together and I've, so far i've had a blast doing it that's well, awesome we, we were both bald with good beards i had a good beard <laughs> at the time so it was just it worked you know yeah I mean? like we just had the look you had the look yeah <laughs> so <laughs> we're like hey you guys kind of look look alike yeah yeah, yeah uh that's good so so and i know you guys are are branching it seems like that it's branching out more it is yeah it was mainly with black diamond and then uh just this past weekend we uh debuted with uh prospect pro and pa and then we did the dropkick diabetes show Mm -hmm. on sunday 
And now August 3rd, <clears throat> we're debuting for Real Shoot Wrestling. So, That's I awesome. mean, we're kind of branching out a little bit more and more. So, it goes mainly just Black Diamond, but now we're trying to... And we did Fight Society, too, and just scheduling conflicts kind of... That didn't take off right away, so hopefully mm-hmm. we can get back in there. Yeah, Friday night move. Yes. <laughs> well, I, I know it was before that. It was before that. Was uh, just, this certain someone here. Just, yeah. We have families. Like I mean, there's one seven day a kids month in I was between unavailable us. when it was that yes. day. There's, yeah. there, we've got seven kids between the two of us, so I mean, it kind of gets hectic. <laughs> But yeah, <laughs> I noticed that because I think they're all ringside at uh, Black are, Diamond. Yeah, all of them. Yeah. <laughs> so you guys got a kind of a ready-made. Uh, that's yeah, how you get yeah. over really yeah, quick. That's at a, that's Black a, that's, Diamond. Bring yeah. all your kids. Bring all your kids. Is this, everybody loves you. Is this the West Virginia way? Yeah, <laughs> it's got to be. It, works. I mean, it's, it has to be. <laughs> like I think I, I think I noticed a little bit of that when I went to Tennessee too. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. So you know what are what is it like? You know, you, you guys are getting into different you know different territories, different you know uh, 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 opponents at this time um you know it, it seems like you know a lot of different promotions than, than you were previously um how has that journey been for you guys so far you learned a bit getting out there yeah i mean you never know you know, like you never realize how many other people like out there you haven't met before mm-hmm. like and they're actually close by but you know and, and then we met i met a handful of people just this past weekend, especially that Dropkick Diabetes show. There's like a ton of people there. That, I couldn't believe how many people yeah, were there. I mean, it was I like, a, it was like a 40 man yeah. we Royal got... Rumble type deal. I mean, there's just a lot of people that I've known over the years mm-hmm. and then I just met. And it's it's just crazy how many people are around that you don't know. We, mm-hmm. we got there at call time and there were so many cars in the parking lot. I thought the doors opened already. Yeah, we were like, late. Oh but yeah, it was, it's it kind was, of like the day when they had insane. the 110 person battle royal. Yeah, yeah. that's yes. exactly yes. what it was. Like we were probably just short of that at yeah. Dropkick Diabetes. It was, it was fun. It's an experience to actually get to meet a lot of different people that share your same passion. Mm-hmm. It's really interesting. Well, speaking of which, you guys were, I believe, both a part of that uh, uh, world's largest uh, yes. Battle Royal yes. attempt for Guinness, um, and and I, I keep forgetting. I, probably about half the people I talk to these days were in that Battle Royal. Yeah, mm-hmm. I was just talking and, to <laughs> David Lawless of the Drop a Diabetes Show, and that's what we were talking about. The that, and then we were both in the Tower Match mm-hmm. later on that evening, and then yeah, it's, there's just so many people in there. You run into them all the time. Well, and also there's so many people that were there that I had no idea were there. Mm-hmm. Yes, you know, yeah. and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, I was at him." It's like I filmed it with yeah. like four cameras. Yeah, and I had no idea so you were in many, there. So many, so uh, many yeah. video and pictures, and then, yeah, it, like I don't, I don't remember over half the people was in it either. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. Big mass of humanity. Yes, and- <laughs> yes it was. And Especially, <clears throat> I was. Because I just started, my first match was last June, so I was only three months in at the time, mm-hmm. and I was only working Black Diamond, so it was only three shows or four shows, so I knew nobody. I mm-hmm. knew the 12 guys at Black Diamond, so now now that I'm knowing everybody and everything, now I'm starting to realize, oh, I met you eight months ago. I just didn't know it at the time. So I had no idea who it's they kind were. Of a, so. It kind of a fast uh, networking event, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. getting you into it. Yeah. Absolutely. Like that, that thing is, it's that thing that slowly happens probably over the first two years of wrestling. You just got like your fourth show. Mm. <laughs> so awesome. So, um, you know, tell me where the way, the name wayward sons come from, <laughs> by the way, love the music. Uh, and that's, that, what, that's where the name came from. Like, just, just, we like the song. Yes, pretty much. <laughs> like we started out as the new guard. Yeah. Which, oh mean, yeah. We kind of yeah. We both. Kinda I remember agree- that for a minute. Yeah, we both kind of agreed it wasn't really a it wasn't a catchy name. Like, mm-hmm. well, the new guard, we were still talking ideas, and we were gonna <clears throat> we after the first of the year we were gonna start bring this tag team and come up with a name and all this, but then they had the West Banco show at Black Diamond. Yeah, that was at the arena for the Nailers. Yes. Uh, Mick Foley was there. Yeah. This yeah. was two months before we planned on starting the tag team, and mm-hmm. and Rick. Oh, well, we got you booked as a tag team. Like, so we had to hurry up and come up with a name, name yeah. then. So <clears throat> we had a couple ideas, and we both liked the new guard, or um, both liked uh, Wayward Sons, but at the time I was thinking, like, the catchy music and stuff, it's really good if you're a face, if you're a good guy. Everybody wants to sing to it. Yes. Yeah, yeah not that How does it work? Yeah. Like, that has to be our music forever. For me, yeah. I need to introduce you to, to introduce you as a team to my sister because she is a big Supernatural fan. Yeah. And I have, you guys are familiar with that, the, the, how that song plays in that, yeah. that show. <laughs> I'm, I am not. No. It's but. a, it's basically, I think they basically play it for the lead in to the se- season finale every, like, they recap mm-hmm. the entire season oh, really? to the song. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and it, so like, every, um, every time you guys come out, I'm just like, 
okay. Yeah. <laughs> Time to watch some super. That, that's and, and then like as soon as that first the first verse hits, man, like everybody's like either singing along mm-hmm. or just instantly behind us. Mm-hmm. And I mean, I, I, I we had to go with that song, and it had to be the cover. It's a, like, it's it had a cheap to be the, trick, but it's yeah, worked. It's it worked works. for us so far. Mm-hmm. So. It's, hey, it's the little things, right? Yes, it's it what is. you yeah, get here in wrestling. You start little, you start little, <laughs> and go from there. You go from there. Excellent. Um, so, you know, going into the tag team, is there anybody that you were looking at as as kind of influences going into the tag team world here? Like local guys, or just a, in a, local, or in general? You know, um, I think we both kind of we talked about like threw names around like the revival. Mm-hmm. And uh, the War Raiders or what? Are, what are they now? I don't know. Viking something. I think they're back to the old Viking Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, but we wanted to have like that, um, not like a cheerleader type team. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like we wanted the Rough an intense tough. brawling style. Like that's what we both like. We both like to work that way. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what we wanted to lean towards. So. But teams like that, not real flashy. Like, I can do some of the flippy stuff, but I think we like more ground and pound type wrestling Roughness. than anything. Yeah. yeah. So those are the teams, some of the teams that we kind of watched and try and take some ideas from. Mm-hmm. Is it good? You think of anybody else? No. Just, I don't know. Like we're, I've been watching a bunch of old school Mm-hmm. Okay. Like old school stuff. Like I know, but I really not know exactly who to watch. So I'm I mean, if you go too far back it's like two minute squash matches, so you can't go real far <laughs> back because you as soon as you start to get into it it's over. But um I like to make the road warriors just like the tough ground and pound kind of mm-hmm. power. Like I don't wanna that's that's what I wanna be. I don't wanna be like the like he said, the flashy over the top faces just like the we're here for business kind of kicking ass kind of thing Mm -hmm. but that's 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 what i want that's what we kind of look towards awesome so tell me what is the best and the worst thing about indie wrestling so far i I know i know i know gary you you're you're a little what under you just over a year officially right yeah Yeah. so uh what's the best and worst of it so far for you oh well like we talked about earlier just all the people you meet like you don't get that out on the street. You don't run into like drop kick, drop kick diabetes. You don't walk in. You don't run into eighty people that you have stuff in common with. Yeah, like, and things like that. And uh, so just the people I've met and friendships I have now that I didn't know <clears throat> a year ago. And uh, worst thing, mm, well, well, without. <laughs> Without being too serious, I could do without the fanny packs. <laughs> there's a lot of fanny packs in independent wrestling. Oh, yes, look at it. Now there's like blinking ones, yes. too. Yes. Thanks, Xander Gabriel, right? Well, his is cool. I don't mind it if it's part of the character and stuff. Yeah. But the number of people that walk into a locker room with a fanny pack on is shocking. Yeah, like I never, I, when, growing up, I've never seen as many. Yeah. You, know, you walk into a room full of 80, 80 workers and then like, Half of them's got fanny packs on, but yeah, I mean it's it's all fun though. It, it is kind of fun to see, uh, especially the older workers. Uh, you know, when you meet them at, at later shows, like they're basically doing their business out yeah. of the out of the fanny out packs, of fanny packs <laughs> for yes. the fans and everything. Yes, it's just exactly. like this is really it seriously is part of the business. Yes. <laughs> so that's awesome. So what's uh where you know generally when this goes up here, um you know people can pick this any up any anywhere, but where prospectively in the next couple months are we going to see uh, you guys uh, uh, out and about? Uh, I mean, there's so many promotions out there to work for. Um, I wouldn't mind maybe getting in a little with IWC or Rise mm-hmm. or back at Fight Society. Hopefully this Real Shoot Wrestling kind of takes off. But just there's just so many places. And like we've discussed, we don't, we don't want to work the same people over and over again. We want to yeah. work like a new tag team every show. Like work different styles, different people. Not I don't want it to get stale. Because I think that's where I was getting bored as mm-hmm. a singles competitor. I was starting to work the same people over and over again, and it just started getting stale and boring. So I like to jump from promotion to promotion, just working 
different people, people I've never worked before and or haven't worked for or worked with in a long time. This no particular place, just show up everywhere, I guess. Mm-hmm. We have a good thing with Black Diamond. Like just last weekend, we worked um, <clears throat> at Prospect Pro. We worked the professor and the vice principal. And I thought we, which is a weird sentence, yeah. which is a strange sentence yes, in itself, it right? <laughs> but it was it was fun. It was yeah, different. It was, it was really, fun. It and was, both mm-hmm. of them being young guys, they they were very like the match came out much better than we expected. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we actually messaged Rick about getting them at Black Diamond and mm-hmm. stuff like. And and we kind of we can work other people, and if it works, or we want to do it again, Rick's real lenient with letting us bring people in and mm-hmm. doing it again. So. So we kind of have a good situation there. It's nice to have a, a home promotion like yeah, that. But, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not too into right now with the storyline behind our characters. Mm-hmm. I just want to work as many different people as we can. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, that, that's what's going to keep it fresh and fun for me. That's awesome. So, uh, and where can people find you guys online? Um, I have a Celtic Curse Gavin Jacobs page on Facebook. Uh, we have uh, the Wayward Sons page on Facebook. I very rarely use Twitter, but I'm also on there. But mostly whenever I tag you and stuff. Exactly. That that's, that's, <laughs> that's when I open Twitter is when you tag me and something. That's right. And you? And then I just have the Garrett Lee page on Facebook. G-A-R-Y-T-T. I've messed that up several times by now. <laughs> <so>. uh, <laughs> so go go check them out. And again, if you guys are... Uh, with us with the Indie Wrestling Network. Um, you guys are featured, of course, on a lot of the Black Diamond shows, as well as the most recent Prospect Pro Wrestling from this past Saturday, as of this recording, is actually up there for you guys to check out, too. Uh, so please go check that out. Hey, guys, thanks for coming into the studio. I know thanks it's a little bit of a drive for you guys yes. to get up here and uh, hanging out with us and everybody hanging out in the chat room as well. Uh, Ronnie Stark says, my brother's. <laughs> <laughs> oh Ronnie out there so uh, thank you so much everybody uh, check out the Wayward Sons uh, thank you for uh, checking out the show here live on Indie Wrestling dot US uh, Facebook page and uh, until next time please support Indie Wrestling <laughs> This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.